one to say the first goodbye had to love and lose a hundred million times had to get it wrong to know just what i like now i'm falling you say my name like i have never heard before i'm indecisive but this time i know for sure i hope i'm not the only one that You know you can get whatever you want from me Whenever you want it, baby It's you in my reflection I'm afraid of all the things it could do to me If I would've known it, baby I would've stayed at home Cause I was doing better alone But when you said hello I know that was the end of it all I should've stayed at home Cause now there ain't no letting you go
Showing my face, you want what now looks like. Let me give you a taste.
When I get messed up at the party, I make a scene and get up. Okay, hello guys, uh, welcome back to your lecture 2 and today we are going to talk about network command and services okay so um, in this lecture we will be playing a game together so it is not like uh, we are not going to use too much of the lecture slide 
So um, what we are going to learn today would be a few network commands and then I'll show you one network uh, program that you can use to do some port scanning. So um, I think all of you here are new, so this might be the first time you're using Packet Tracer. So we'll go slow. Uh, we have three hours to play this game. We'll try to finish as, as many as we can this stream. If we cannot finish, then we'll continue on the Friday stream. Okay, so um, there, are two, there are two ways you can do this lecture. Okay, um, you can one, if you want to play along, uh, I recommend, highly recommend that you play along with me so that you know uh, what you're doing. Otherwise, you'll be like watching a Korean drama without the subtitle. Okay, so of course, you can always choose to sit back and enjoy the show while I, I do the demonstration for you. Lah, okay, so I just want to tell you that because this is a lecture class, um, throughout the lectures when I'm doing the demo, if you have any questions, you can always ask me on the chat and then I will only reply to you at the lecture break okay, because I cannot be, I'm not looking at the chat throughout the lecture so please be patient with the reply for the Q&A. Okay, so um, for these lectures, it is actually a hacking game. Okay, I, I wouldn't say a hacking game. So what we want to do is we want to be Alex today. Everybody here is Alex and then we are going to infiltrate a fruit company. Okay, so we want to get into the company and then in a short while, we will be performing a series of hacking work. I'll show you how to do this. It's not hacking. Lah. Maybe it sounds like hacking to people, but once you know, uh, once you get the whole of this, then you think, hey, why everything is so easy? Okay, so I will show you on the screen in a short while what are all the things that you need to do. So over here, if you have... So now what you are seeing on the screen right now is all the things that we are going to do in a short while. And there are quite a number of them. And we will be doing all of this using either network command or network services. Okay. So again, I just want to tell you that I'm that kind of gamer who like to unlock all achievement. I want to collect all the treasure box so that I get 100% progress bar for the game. So in this stream, I'm going to show you all how to do all of this. But if you have already done the lab this week, you think some of these challenges might be too easy for you, just feel free to skip those challenges. Okay. So I'm going to explain one by one and then we'll go, we'll start with the first side quest. Now, before, uh, before I go into the game, I just want to tell you that if you want to play along, you need to have Packet Tracer installed on the machine. Okay, so you can get Packet Tracer from Babel. It is already in the starter pack. Now, uh, I hope that when you do the installation, you use the installer that I provide you because in this subject, from time to time, you might need to run Packet Tracer. Uh, I think in your lab test one and lab test two, you also need Packet Tracer which is why it is highly recommended you use the version that I provide. Okay, now the, the reason is because if you download Packet Tracer from somewhere else, you might still be able to run the file, the PKD file, but you might get into some bugs. And if you are taking a test, a lab test, this bug might actually cause you to lose a few marks. So again, I'd like to advise you to use the installer that I provide you on Babel. Okay, now if you are using Mac, you need to download a separate installer, which is also up on Babel. So Mac and Windows, you are using two different packet tracer. Lah. Choose the one that you are based on the OS that you are running right now. Okay, so I just want to tell you a little bit about packet tracer. What is packet tracer exactly? So again, uh, in this subject, uh, one of the main things that you will learn will be on network devices and network services. Lah. So you will be using routers, switches, hub. The problem is because this is an online class, so you cannot physically touch a real router or a real switch. Now, luckily for us, we have Packet Tracer because Packet Tracer is a software that is designed by Cisco. Cisco is a networking company in the US, if you haven't heard of. So this program, with this program, we can build our network and we can also use to learn about computer networking virtually. Okay, so Packet Tracer is not real. It is just like a software that you can use to build a network and then you can test it out, uh, try something fun with the network. So that's Packet Tracer. And throughout this subject, we will be using Packet Tracer a lot and each of the lab will be doing different things with Packet Tracer. Lab. So in this stream, what we are going to do is we will use the Alex Hacker PKT file and we will try to do some infiltration. We will be spy today and then we will do this step by step. Okay, so um, let's take a look at what we want to do first. Now before that, uh, for those who haven't installed Packet Tracer, right now it is too late for you to install. So just focus on the stream first. During the break time, if you want to try this out, 
you can do that during the break. Another way would be just finish the whole stream and when you think that you have the time to try this out on your own, you can always do it after the lectures, okay? So now, uh, on the screen here, you are seeing the missions that the boss gives us. Lah. So this game, it is like Jumanji. Lah. So we want to get in we, and we want to help Alex to finish all these things and we help Alex to get up, go back to his family, okay? So the first thing is uh, we want to install a backdoor. So what will happen here is once we get into the network, we want to install a backdoor. So that is the first mission, okay? Install a backdoor. After this, we once we install, that means we have the leverage, okay? Because we already get control of the network. So we want to ask the CEO to pay us some money, okay? Yeah? So that's the second thing we want to do. We want to blackmail the CEO. That's the first two mission. That's the main mission. And just like any game that you play, uh, you have main mission and small mission, uh, the side quest. The difference is when you play game, the side quest you do or you don't do, never mind one. Because if you do side quest, you get more experience while your weapon become upgraded. Okay, then you can KO people in one hit. But in this stream, we have to do all the side quests. Okay, because for before you can do any of the main quests, you need to complete one to four. Then only you can do the main quest. Okay, uh. so we will look into the first side quest now. And that is to find out the IP address. So before that, I will explain to you a little bit on the background story so that you know what is going on here. Now, um, over here, this is the Apple Campus Network. Okay, um, so right now what happened is that Alex is given a laptop because today is the first day Alex worked in Apple company. So the company gave him a laptop and this laptop is connected to the Apple Campus Network. Okay, but what this means is that now Alex can talk to anyone else in Apple already because he's already inside and his PC is given an IP address, IP info address that can talk on the network. So as you can see on the slides here, the IP address of Alex laptop is 192.168.1.88. Okay, I will write this now for you again just in case it is not clear. Okay, so this IP address is given by Apple to Alex. Alex don't know about this IP because what happened is Alex go to the work first day. The boss said, nah, this is your new PC. Use this. Okay, make me proud. So what Alex want to do, the first thing is Alex want to find out what is the IP address of, of this. Uh, Alex wants to find out what is the IP address of this PC. So again, I maybe you didn't see what I showed you earlier. So let's say this is a laptop. So Apple say, take this laptop, you will be using this laptop when you work here. Okay. Now, why would Alex want to know what is his IP address? Okay, the reason is very simple. Because once you know the IP address, you from there you will know more about the network information. Okay, so we'll start with the easy one first. Now, how do you find out what is the IP address? Okay, now in the, in this case, uh, you might you might have the question, hey, why I need to find? I already know the IP is 1.88. Okay, so what you see here, what we can see is different. What we see is a network topology. You know the Alex IP is 1.88 because I tell you. Okay, but for Alex it's different. Alex don't see this map, you know, only me and you see this thing. So for Alex, what Alex sees is only this thing. Okay, he doesn't know what is the IP address of this PC. That's what he need to find out now. So to find your IP, uh, address on the PC is very simple. We use the command called ipconfig. Okay, so uh, I will do this demo for you and you can do this along if you want. So can you bring up your package tracer file? If you can load the file, you should see something like what I'm showing you here. Okay, so this is the network that I have just explained to you earlier. Okay, so I'll give you a few seconds here to open up this and then we'll do this together. Okay, now the first thing that you might encounter is some of you will have the error message Alex icon file is not found. Okay, that's okay. If you have that message, just click next or cancel because it doesn't affect the game. Okay, just that the, the icon file is missing. So what you see here in place of Alex, in the place of Alex uh, over here. Okay, hold on, just let me show this to you. Now over here when you see Alex format is a bit different because I this is Alex, the real Alex, okay? Uh for you you will see a server icon, it's a bit different, but that's okay, it's the same thing, okay? 
why why you see server why I see differently is because uh, the device that I give you is a server and don't worry about whether it's a desktop or a server just think of it as the same thing as the same thing okay so we're going to find what is the IP address so okay right now uh, so you have to think the whole throughout this whole lectures you are Alex okay and then uh, we want to find out what is the IP address to do so it's very simple just click on the PC that Alex is using so you left click one time okay if you do a left click one time then you will see something like this so this is the you will see something like this which is a desktop of Alex laptop okay this is a desktop now if you don't see the same screen then probably you're in the wrong tab you need to check when you click here over here on top of the window there are a few tab make sure you are in desktop okay if you are showing you're in some other tabs then you won't see the same thing okay now make sure you are in desktop and then you can see all the icon here so what is this this is just like the laptop that you or the pc that you're using when you turn on your pc after loading it goes into your desktop and then you see all your icon okay so messy during week 8 midnight all assignment is on the desktop this is exactly the desktop like what you see in the real pc okay so now the next thing is we want to find out what is the ip address of this pc that alex is using and to do so we go to command prompt okay for you to type any network services you use command prompt if you are using a window pc if you are using mac os or you are using linux machine you use the program called terminal terminal okay this one here if you are using windows use command prompt okay so i will demonstrate using windows i'll click on command prompt and then you will see a screen like this this is where you can type in all your network service uh, not your commands okay now we will start with the first command to, of the day which is ipconfig so what you need to do really is very simple go here type ipconfig and you press enter now one thing for you to take note is that uh, this might be a little bit different what you see here might be different for me is c okay for you you will see server but that is fine don't worry about that you just type the same ipconfig command okay do not type c double colon this one don't type this symbol here straight away type the command press enter and then you will see what is your ip address of the machine okay is everything okay for you so i'm going to explain a bit on what you get here now first thing to remember is that ipconfig allow us to see ip configuration informations on the machine which is what exactly what alex want to do now okay uh? so remember what's our first mission we want to know what is the ip address that apple give to alex and with ipconfig we can find out easily this is the ip address of the machine 192.168.1.88 that is the ip address that simple okay now of course um this is the IP address that we don't want to use because Apple know that 1.88 is me. Okay, if I'm going to do something bad today, don't say bad lah. If I want to try something special today on Apple network, I cannot let Tim Cook or I cannot let let Steve Jobs know I'm doing this. So I have to change the IP later. Okay. Uh, for those who are having issues, please uh follow the stream first. During the break, I will uh answer your questions individually. Yeah. Okay, guys, now look at the next thing here. A subnet mask. Okay, a subnet mask is very important in computer networking. And with subnet mask, you can know the address range. Now, in this stream, we won't talk about subnet mask. We will talk more about subnet mask in lecture 3, where you learn how to calculate network addresses. So for now, we will skip subnet mask. Now, uh, the next one here, default gateway. Default gateway is your router this is very important please remember this the default gateway that you see from the ip config is your router ip address and remember what we said in the first class for every network in every network you need to have a router if you want to go to the internet okay so without a router you can only talk to your friend in your own local area network if you want to talk to somebody else on another network you need a router for example if today I'm in Gampa, I want to talk to a lecturer in Sungai Long campus, 
I need a router. For me to talk to another lecturer in Gampa campus, I do not need a router. Okay, so over here, default gateway means the router IP address. So if I ask you what is the IP address of the router Apple company is using right now, this is the answer. 192.168.1.254 is the router IP address. Okay, so there's really only two things that you need to know from this screen. The first one is from IP config, you can know what is your own IP address, and in this example, it's 1.88. And you can also know that the router that you are using to connect to the internet right now is having the IP 1.254. Okay? So, in that case, that means we have already done the first mission. We know that the IP is 1.88. So, let's go back to the earlier screen here and we can tick off the first missions. So we have already found out that Alex IP address is 192.168.1.88. So that is the first mission done. Okay. Now before I go to the second mission, I will take a look at the chat. If you have any questions, please ask me in the chat right now. Okay, cool. So uh, a big shout out to everyone who is replying. Uh, thank you for making me don't feel alone. And I thank you for making me don't feel like Dora the Explorer today. So let's get to the second quest here. And the second thing that Alex want to do is he want to change the IP address to a new IP. Okay, so why Alex want to do so? Because Alex is a smart hacker. You see, today if I want to hack something, okay, if I use the original IP 1.88 to do some hacking, Apple is going to find out because Apple is also smart people. Do you think that you can just do anything, walk in, walk out alive, Apple will not notice? No, no, no. Apple will know that somebody is doing something weird in his network. But if we change this IP address to some other IP, then Apple cannot know we are doing the weird stuff. So why I say so? Because this 1.88 is given by Apple to us. So if we use 1.88 to do something bad, Apple can detect, hey, 1.88 is bad guy, catch him, then Alex is gone. First mission already gone. Okay, now, in that case, we want to change this IP to some other IP, any other IP, so that when Apple detect, let's say, for example, I change this to 1.4. Apple detect, hey, 1.4, something, some bad guy is using 1.4. But that's as much as Apple can know. He cannot know who is using 1.4 because 1.4 can be anybody on the network. It can be Steve Jobs. It can be Tim Cook, right? So, you see, if we change the IP address now, Apple will not know who is the bad guy. They can only know there is a bad guy in the network. Which is why now Alex is going to change his IP address to some other IP. Okay? So, how do we do so? Let's get to the next uh, quest here. I'll come back to that in a short while. Uh. I want to uh, keep the flow going, so I will show you about how to change IP address first. So let's get back to the packet tracer, get back to the game file, and again, we'll be clicking on LX PC. If you are not in LX PC, please keep click. If you're already in, then you just need to close this, uh, this command prompt. Okay, just close by clicking X button here. So for those who are already in the command prompt, if you have done the quest one earlier, now you need to press on the X button to close the command prompt. Okay? Now, to change an IP address on Packet Tracer is very easy, but remember Packet Tracer is just a game, a software. It is not real. If you want to change IP address on a real machine, it, the steps are different. Okay? I will tell you how to do that later. For now, we will change for Alex. So, how do you change? Go to this IP configurations. So, if you're already on the desktop, one of the icon here will allow us to change IP. So, this one, IP configurations. If you click on here, 
then you open a screen where you can change the IP address. Now let's take a look at this screen. Over here, you see that there are two ways we can assign an IP address. Now, right now, Alex PC is using a static IP and you can also assign IP using a DHCP. So I will just repeat this again. Two ways you can assign IP. Static IP means that you have to assign IP manually to each of the PC. For example, now if I have 100 PC in Utah campus, 100 PC, we know that for all the PC to get online, to join the network, you need to have an IP address. Without IP address, you cannot talk to anybody else on the network. Okay, so my job is Utah pay me to make all of these 100 PC go online. That means I have to configure 100 PC. I have to go to 100 PC, each of every one of them, I key in IP address, a different IP for each of the PC. Wow, 100 PC, I need to do this for how many times? 100 times, you know. Hey, come on now, you don't pay me enough to ask me to do this kind of thing. I don't want to sweat one, I want to sit in the office with aircon. Okay, so what can we do? We can use a DHCP server. And with DHCP, we only need to configure the server one time. And then, the server will be responsible to give up IP address to all the new PC or existing PC on the network. Which means that I don't care whether I have 100 PC or 1000 PC. As long as I have one DHCP server running, everybody on the network will get an IP address. Because DHCP will give up the IP address to everyone that try to join the network. That is DHCP. And if you do so, that is called a dynamic IP. Okay, the slides will be given to you in lecture 3. So now you just need to know that two ways to assign IP address. If you want to key in one by one, it's called a static IP. If you use a DHCP automatically get IP, it's called a dynamic IP. Okay, so in this case, right now Alex is using a static IP and we want to change 88 to some other IP. So how to change is really simple. We just need to change the number here to some other number, okay? Because we don't want Apple to know that 88 is doing something bad, right? So you can change this to any number from 1 to 254. But I tell you, you don't choose 1, 2, 3 because 1, 2, 3 is already used by somebody. Okay, of course, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, since I want to do bad thing, why not I change this IP address to 1.1? .1? You see, if I change this to 1.1, .1, it means that I'm having Steve Jobs IP address. So when Apple say, hey, one the one is the bad guy, they go and catch the bad guy, they catch Steve Jobs. Wow, you cannot catch your own boss, right? So nothing is going to happen. But that, it doesn't work that way. Because on a computer network, you cannot have two PC that shares the same IP address. Which means that if Steve Jobs already used one dot one, you cannot use the same IP. You have to use some other IP. Okay, that is one of the rules in IP network. So in this case, um. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll change this to, to some other IP address and you just hold on, uh, let me close some of the program here. Okay, we'll learn more about the IP config. Yeah, you're right, Simon. So we'll learn more about IP config in lecture 3. For now, we're just going to play the game. So you can change this to any number. I will put it to number 4. Okay, if you are feeling Chinese today, you can change this to 188 or any number with 8. But you have to be careful here. The number that you can use has to be in this range. So you can only change from 192.168.1.4 to 192.168.1.254. Okay, so for you guys, you can pick any number within this range. We call this the IP address range. Okay, this is called the usable range. Now, in this stream, you don't have to worry about how I get this range. We will learn how to calculate this address range in lecture 3. Okay, for now, you just randomly pick any number within this range. Okay, now if you are asking why I cannot use 1, 2, 3, that's because if you can see here, 1, 2, 3 is already used by our boss here. Steve Jobs is using dot 1. Tim Cook is using dot 2. Mark Zuckerberg, I don't know why Mark Zuckerberg works in Apple today, but he is using dot 3. Okay, 
Now again, you don't use any serve I. Now if you check here, hold on, hold on, guys. Let me let me quit this one first. Now it is taking a lot of memory, so just let me quit some of the program. Okay, good, we are back. So uh, over here, if you are trying to assign random IP, please don't use 1.10 and 1.100 because it is also used by the server. If you use this, you will get IP conflict later. Okay, so by now you can randomly take any IP address. So in my case, I will use dot four, and then you don't have to press anything else. That's how you change an IP address. You can close this configuration tab. Just close this one, and to make sure that we have actually changed the IP, we will do another IP config in the command prompt. So if I do another IP config, you can see right now that my IP is already changed to 192.168.1.4 from the previous 1.88 now it is changed to 1.4 okay so that's how you change a static IP in packet tracer so I give you a few seconds if you have any questions on how to change IP address please write on the chat now Okay, yeah, uh, Arjun Blaze, you asked a very good question. Yes, correct. So like I said earlier, 1.10 and 1.100 cannot use because the server already used the IP address. Okay, uh, Chun Wai, good question Chun Wai. So uh, because this is a static IP, actually there is no easy way for you to know unless you are the network administrator because Every company will hire a network administrator. Only that person know what IP is being used by what device. If you use a static IP addressing. So if that people is very important one. If one day you make that guy unhappy, he leave the company. Then nobody else will know what IP is being used. Okay, so it's not really good to use static IP. Which is why normally on a company like Apple or Google, they will be using a DHCP. Even in Utah, we have our own DHCP server. Okay, so Chun Wai, to answer your questions, the only way you know what IP is being used is you really have this map that what we are seeing right now, then you can know. Another way is the DHCP server is actually quite smart. Okay, when the DHCP want to give IP address to many devices, he will check first. He will check what IP is being used. Okay, you don't have to know how he check. Like, just think that DHCP has a way to know what IP is being used. And when he gives IP address to other hosts, he will not use that IP address. Okay. Okay, uh Ying Yi have a question if I change to 254. Yeah. Again, 254 also you cannot use. Sorry, I did I forget to mention that you cannot use 254 because right here, as you can see here, all the device that you can see in this network, all these IP address you cannot use. This one cannot use. 1, 2, 3, you cannot use, 10, you cannot use, 100, you cannot use. Again, uh, I'm sorry that I forget about 254, also you cannot use because this IP right now is the router IP address, it's being used by your router, okay? Other than that, any number from within the range that I showed you earlier, you can use it. So any other questions about changing IP address? 10 more seconds and then we will go to the next challenge. So if you have done this, then uh, we can go back to the first slide here to take this off. So cool, we are done with changing the IP. So this is done. Make sure that you write down your new IP just in case you don't remember them later. So for my case, now my new IP is 192.168.1.4. It has been changed to 1.4. Okay.
Okay, now um, there are a few more questions coming. I'll answer them first. Uh, Hong Yu, you say that why people use static IP? Yeah, very good question, Hong Yu. That I mean it really, really good. Okay, the reason people use static IP is because um, in some cases we don't want the IP address to change. Okay, now to answer this question, I will explain using the slide. I because I want to answer Hong Yu. Uh, this is a very good question. Why you don't? Why people still want to use static IP? Now the simple answer is because in some cases we don't want the IP address of a machine to change. For example, a server. Okay. Now, you go to the slide here. In one of the slides, you will see one one output of IP config. Okay, this is actually IP config slash all. I I will come back to this later. But for now, I want you to look at this wording here. Call prefer. Okay. Now, uh, to make this easy, let me let me give you an example of a server. Today, imagine that you have a web server. So let's say you have a web server and the IP address of the web server is 192.168.1.10 okay? and this is a dynamic IP meaning that I use a DHCP right now okay? so this is a server and everybody is connecting to the server using this IP address 1.10 okay? so let's say you have many people here so these are all the clients all the circles here are the clients, okay, or PC or iPhone. So if this is a web server right now, what is happening is if I want to use this server, I will always send the request to 1.10, okay. If I'm using a dynamic IP, it means that this IP address can change from time to time because DHCP don't give the same IP to one people for a very long time. We will change the IP address. So for example, today if if your PC get an IP address from the router, the router give him 1.10. Tomorrow you check again, the IP can change to 1.11. The next day you check again, it changed to 1.18. It is always changing. Okay? So if you use a DHCP, which means the dynamic IP, your IP address can change from time to time. So this is a problem if you are a server. You see, right now, if on this example here, today I have 1.10, so all the people here, all the client here, know that for me to go to this server, I only need to go to 1.10. This is a destination IP. We call this a destination IP. Okay? But if I use a dynamic IP, tomorrow this 10 change to 12. Then, how do you think this client here can know that the server already changed the IP. Cannot. The client cannot know. Then the next day, it changed to 13. How can the all the people who want to use the server know that the new IP is 13? Cannot. There is no way. Unless, I mean, I mean you will learn more like, on DNS, there is a way. But right now, think that it is not good for a server to change the IP. We always want to keep the IP address the same. So that every time you want to go to facebook.com, you want to go to apple.com, you go to the same IP, okay? That is one of the reasons we use static IP. So if you want to fix this one, for a server, you can use a static IP. So always use static IP for server, okay? So that is what you should know. I hope I answer your questions properly, Hongyi. Okay, yeah, so that explains why people still use static IP because for some device that you don't want their IP address to change, you use static IP. Okay? Now let's get back to the next question here. Um, okay, Visha has a question. What is the usable range from? Uh, the usable range is from 4 to 253. Uh, Visha, actually, the usable range is what I shown you on the slides earlier. So these are the usable range. For this example, uh, it is it doesn't mean that for every example it is the same. For this example, the usable range is 192.168.1.1 until 192.168.1.254. Now the thing is that one is already being used, two is being used, three is being used, four 
is okay, it's still free. So 10 is being used, 100 is being used, 254 is being used. So other than all this IP address, other than this one, all the rest of the IP address you can use. Except what I just listed here, you cannot use. Okay. Now we shall we'll learn more about this one in lecture 3 where you learn about network addressing. Okay. Now next question. Uh, say how? Ask that how about 192.168.2? Now again, that's a very good question. Can you use .2? Now in this case you cannot use dot two okay because dot two is actually on another network so what you see here this is actually network number one network number two will be starting from two dot one to one nine two dot one six eight dot two dot two five four so you see this is the difference here one one and two and two so to answer these questions that your friend is asking can you use dot two? No, no, no. Dot two is network number two. Dot one is network number one. If you use dot two, you are in another network. That means later on you will have connectivity issue. Okay. Now, if you have the question, how do I know network number one and network number two? Again, we will learn this in lecture three. Okay. Now, next question here: How to get IP configurations? Just type IP config in the command prompt. You can get IP configurations. So Brian has a question, how about 0, 0.0? Okay, again, Brian, very good question. You cannot use 0, 0.0. So your friend is asking, can you use 192.168.1.0 or maybe 192.168.0.0? Okay, now again, you cannot use 0 here. You cannot use 0 here. That's because 0 is actually the very first address in the network. And we call this address a network address okay now network address is not assigned to any host we cannot give this address to any PC or anything else it is kept for the whole network so that one day uh, it is for global reachability now you will learn about this one in lecture 4 when we talk about network routing okay now uh, next question here so uh, Theo has another question, only the last group of number is changeable. Okay, good. So this is again a good question. I think you guys are really, really smart. So yeah, you're right. In this example, you can only change this number here. The one that I highlight in red color right now. Okay, red color one. You can only change the last number. That is correct. That is because uh, right now, this part here is your network part and this part here is the host. Okay, don't worry about this. This is too much information for you. In lecture 3, you will know which part you can change, which part you cannot change. Okay, so we skip that for now. Okay, now again, Yuan Tat has a very good question. Is 254 always for router? Uh, you can say so, yes. Uh, normally for router, we will give either the first IP or the last IP. So in this case, for example, if I want to use the first IP for router, then 192.168.1.1 can give to the router. Another way is I give the last address, 192.168.1.254. Normally, this is the practice. Either the first address or the last address will be given to router. Why? Because it is easy to remember. Okay. If you can remember IP address of a router, you can do many things quickly and easily. But remember, that is not the rule. This is just a recommendation. You can give any IP address. It can be dot three, dot four, or dot ten to any router. That still work. Except that if you want to follow the guideline, then you will use the first and the last address. Okay. Now next question here: How if I have more than two hundred fifty four device? Wow, very good question again. So, uh, uh, I don't know how do I call your name. Can I call Q? So Q is asking, what will happen? If today you see I can only assign dot one until two five four and then I have more than two five four machines, say I have two five five. Yeah, in that case you cannot use this kind of addressing scheme. You need to use a bigger address scheme that can support more number of hosts. Now we will also learn about this in lecture three. So by now you can tell our lecture three is very important because you will learn how to calculate all these things. And to answer your friend's question here, 
once you you once you design a network addressing that is bigger that can support more number of posts, then you can put in more than two five four machines. But but that is in lecture three. Okay. Now um, Andrew is asking: Is router IP also static? You can say so. Most of the time, router IP and server IP should be static IP, and for all the other end devices should be using dynamic IP. Okay, so thank you for the very good questions. Now, any any other questions? If you're okay, then we'll go on to quest number three. I hope I don't miss any of your questions here. Uh, should be fine. Let's go to the next one. So we'll go back to the mission list and then let's see what we missed out. Okay guys, now we are already in mission number 3 and the next thing we want to do is we want to find out what is the IP address of other PC in the network. Okay, why I want to do so? Okay, the reason is because I can tell you Alex is a very good spy, experienced spy and Alex also learned about Sun Tzu Ding Fa. Okay, so one of the rules in Sun Tzu says that you have to know your enemy to win your enemy which is why we have step number 3. Alex wants to know who else is in the campus, Apple campus, so that he know how to plan his next move. Okay, now how do you find out who else is in the network? We can do something we call a ping scan. Okay, now what do I mean by ping scan? Okay, I will show you two ways. The first way is the amateur way. Okay, and then the second way is a pro way. Now, uh, we'll start with the amateur way first, but before that, I can tell you why we want to do this. Another example, so let's say today I'm in Utah campus right now, I'm streaming and of course you will have many other lecturers here today. So what if I want to know who else is here? Can I want to know who are the other lecturers is using my line, is playing Dota 2 right now and making my stream to be so loud. What I can do is, I can do a ping scan. With ping scan, if that means I will ping one IP address at a time. If that IP address reply to me, it means that that host is online, he is active and from that I can guess that ah, this guy is online in the campus right now. Okay, I will show you a real demo later. So for now, uh, we will see how we can find out what are the other IP address. So let's get back to the packet tracer file and oops, okay. So I think you get a better view in this way. So I'll show you the amateur way first. The amateur way is that Alex have to use the ping command. So by now you know that ping command is used to check for connectivity. So for example, if I want to know whether I can talk to somebody, okay, I will use a ping command. Now if you are in a lecture class and then you are sitting just next to a pretty girl, although you are so close together, but if you don't talk to her, still mean that you are not talking, you are still not connected, okay? So for machine, uh, how can machines know whether I can talk to some other machine? I will ping the target IP address. Okay. Now in this example, let's say Alex want to know whether Steve Jobs is working today. So if Alex knows, you just think that if Alex knows Steve Jobs is 1.1, .1, Alex can try to ping Steve. If Steve replies to Alex, means today Steve is working in the campus, right? So how can we do so? I can just go back to Alex PC here, go to command prompt, and we now we're gonna use the ping command. Okay, so a ping command is there are only one parameters. You have to put in the guy you want to ping. So we call this the target destination IP. So for example, if I want to ping Steve Jobs, I will type in one nine two one six eight dot one dot one. Okay, then press enter. Wow, I get a reply. So you can tell uh, the network coverage is very good. Even Steve Jobs, I can ping. From the heaven, I also can ping Steve Jobs. So the network here is very good. Okay, so this explains what ping do for us. If I ping somebody, if that guy is online, if it is reachable, then you will get a reply. So we can take a look at the reply here. So this reply here means that uh, I have four reply. And why you have four reply? That is the first question. Now, if you are using Windows PC, then you get reply because on Windows, when you type P, Windows will send four ICMP requests. So every second, I will send one. In four seconds, I will send four. 
and I will get reply if Steve Jobs is still alive. Okay, now if I use a Linux or a Mac machine, I can show you the ping is unstoppable, it is indefinite. So let's say here I'm using a Mac machine, I can try to ping google.com. Okay, this is just an example, this is different from the game. Huh? So if I ping google.com, you see the ping is unstoppable, it is indefinite until you stop this memory. Okay, so this is the some some cool things that you can know lah. On Windows, every time you ping, you get four reply if it is reachable. On a Linux machine, it is unstoppable unless you stop it yourself by pressing the Control C. Press Control plus C, then you will stop it. Okay. So that is the good news. If you get a reply, now if you ping somebody that is not online then you won't get a reply. For example, I ping 192.168.1.5. We know that this guy is not, is not uh, here, right? So if you try to ping 1.5, you will not get a reply. Okay? So you see, I get a request timeout. Now, over here, what do we learn is that there are two kind of, there are two outcome if you ping somebody. Either you get a reply if it is online, or if it is not, then you get a request timeout. Now, in some cases, you might get some other error message like destination unreachable. But anyway, they, they are the same thing. All these, uh, we call them ICMB message. And it is telling us that 1.5 is not online at the moment. Okay, so now let's go back to our example earlier. Remember our mission. What we want to do is I want to find out who is online today in the network. So if Alex is a newbie hacker, he have to do this. 192.167.1. I ping everybody one by one. And then I list down who replied to me, then that guy is online. So I ping. Okay, 1.1 1 .1 is here today. Then I try. I ping 192.168.1.2. Oh, reply 1.2 is here today. Good. This is how I take attendance. Huh? So 192.168.1.3. Wow, you need to do this one by one. Huh? Of course, you don't want to ping 1.4 because 1.4 is myself. So I will ping 1.5. Oh, no reply. So 1.5 is not here. Then I try 1.6. I try 1.6. Oh, 1.6 is not here. So I keep doing this until you will somehow get to 1.10. Ah, you get a reply because that is the server. So that is how you know who is online on the network right now. Okay, but that is not a very smart way. Lah. Because how many times you want to do this? Okay. So that are a better way, I will show you a better way in a short while, but before that, I will answer some of the question from your friend. Okay, uh, Arju, when you say that you try to ping, you get lost. Try again. Keep trying, you will get the reply. Okay, the first few times when you try to ping, it doesn't work. After that, it will work. Now, again, uh, um, from Kenso, general failure. Uh, Kenso, I think you... Don't be confused, uh, guys. If you are trying to ping, make sure you use the command prompt inside packet tracer. Don't use the command prompt in your windows, okay? That is the real command prompt. Now we are playing the game. So everything that you do has to be inside packet tracer. So make sure that you use this command prompt here to ping Steve Job. Okay? Now, do we have any other questions on how to ping everyone on the network? Everything is fine. Uh, what do you mean by earlier practical? Yeah, of course it is on the earlier practical. Okay, so I, I just want to tell you, uh, uh, Datacom is designed in this way. What you learn in the lectures, you will still learn them in the lab. The difference is that what you learn in the lab is more at once. On the lecture, you'll be learning about the concept in general. When you go to the lab, you have to do it on your own. You have to try it out so that you know whether you get it or you don't get it. Okay, so lecture and the lab, they are synchronized. You have to understand the lectures, then you can do your lab properly. Okay. Uh, so Ming, you Ming have a uh, question. Why does Linux ping indefinitely? Okay, now this is just the way it is designed. I can tell you maybe one of the reasons that I can think of is that because most hackers, they use Linux to hack people. Now, in one of the subjects here in Utah, you will also learn about Kali Linux. In a security subject, where you learn how to hack something, okay? When you do that, please make sure you use the power on the right place, okay? Now, 
you see why people hack with Kali Linux, but people don't hack with Windows because on Kali Linux you can do more things that Windows cannot. Okay, and one of the reason why Linux pain indefinitely is because you can launch what we call a denial of service attack. Now you think about this: if I ping Steve Jobs, the ping doesn't stop. That means that actually Steve Jobs PC is very busy. He have to keep replying me when I ping him, right? Now think about. If I have ten people who ping Steve Jobs together at the same time using Linux, wow! Then Steve Jobs have to reply to ten people, cannot stop, keep replying. So this one will take up resources on his PC, and if you do so in a large scale, we call this a denial of service attack, and it will bring the machine down. So that's one way, why one reason why Linux ping doesn't stop four times. Okay, it is continuous until you stop it. Okay. Now, anybody else have other questions? IP is so weird. IP is so weird is not a problem. Ah, uh. weird is good. Okay, be different. Be yourself. Ah, uh, any other questions? Okay, that's fine. Then we can go to the next one. Now I will show you how you can find out who else is online on the network using the program called Nmap or Zenmap. If you have already been through your lab, you should already done Zenmap. Okay, so I will do this demo. Demo to you using a real example on Utah network. Okay, we will stop. We will pause the Alex hacker game for a while. Just remember, I don't be confused. The example that is coming up is based on a real network in Utah campus. Okay, so you might find the IP address to be slightly different, but that's fine. So what we are going to do next is I want to show you how we can scan all the hosts in Utah net. Okay, and we can do this using this program called ZenMap. Now the installer for this program is already up on Babel. If you haven't do your lab, maybe you haven't installed this, but make sure you install this before you do your lab one. Okay, now this program is very powerful. If it fall to the wrong hand, then I think something bad can happen lah. So you have to be careful about who you trust on the network. And one of the thing you can do with it is to do a ping scan, and with ping scan we can know who is online. So what does ping scan do? It do exactly what I show you earlier. So earlier we ping IP address one by one manually, starting from dot one, dot two, dot three, all the way until the last IP. But who is going to do that? With nmap or zenmap, you can do this automatically with one click. Okay. Now if you are confused, nmap and zenmap they are the same thing. Nmap is the keyboard version, the command based version. Zenmap is the GUI version of Nmap. So if you are the those people who like to use keyboard, you will use Nmap. If you are the those people who like to click click click, then you use Zenmap. But they are the same thing, lah. Okay. So over here, ah, what we are going to do is, you can open up Zenmap if you have it. If you don't have it, just watch my demo and then you go back later. Now over here on the side. Of target, this is where you put in the IP address range that you want to scan. In the lab, you put your eager server IP. Here is different. Ah, I will put the whole range. So remember, just now, in one of the slides here, I show you that this is the network range. Okay, just give me a moment here. So if you still remember earlier, I said that this is the range for. The Apple Campus network, right? Now, what I want to scan is I want to scan this whole range so that anybody inside here, if it is online, you will reply to my ping, and that's how I know you are in the campus. Okay, but again, remember this example is in Utah real network, so the IP address will be a little bit different. Ah, now in this case, my Utah IP address range, I will write this down for you, is one nine two. One six eight dot sixty eight dot one until one nine two dot one six eight dot sixty eight dot two five four. This is the usable IP range. Okay, so right now what I want to do is I want to see who is in Utah campus FICT today. So I will scan the whole range. Ah, so over here in the place of target. I will type starting from dot one until the last address two five four. So let's check this command again. 
So in the place of target, I will scan the whole range 192.168.68.1 until the last address 254. Okay, then here, this is where you choose what you want to do with ZenMap. Now we want to do a ping scan. So over here, I will choose the option ping scan. Over here, this is called ping scan. So as you can see on the screen, we want to make sure you're on ping scan. If you have this range ready and you are on the right profile, then the only thing left to do is to just scan. scan okay, so you can just click scan and you have to wait for a while because it's, a, it's quite a large network. So you have to wait for ZenMap to ask one by one. So it's better instead of I ask myself, now ZenMap is asking for me. So just sit back and relax and in a short while we'll see who is online in Utah today. So yeah, you see that's cool. Right now I have all the machine that is online and what you are seeing here is actually all the IP address. So that is online. So you see 61.8 is online. This is actually the server, uh, this is actually the router. Utah FICT router. This is the IP address, the first one. Then you have 100, 101, 103. So all these are the machines that is currently online. Of course, I can only know how many PCs is online. Like I cannot know who is this guy. Like. Okay, yeah. That's as far as I can know. So you see, right now, uh, you can count what wow, actually so many people come to Utah today. Uh. You see so many PCs is online right now. Okay. And then you can do scan, scan, scan. You say, hey, uh, this one, this is the this is our uh, one. Ayo, what is this doing? This to me. Uh hold on, uh, I'm running out of memory here. I, I think I should add some RAM before the next trip. So now after this you'll see that hey, now this is the special one, Apple. So Guys, please hold on for a while. Uh, I'm trying to turn the YouTube live back. Sorry guys, um, just now we had some technical issues, so let's continue with the stream here. I hope that you can see. Guys, can you see right now? Please tell me know in the chat if you cannot see. Can you see my screen right now? Okay, yeah, everything is fine. Okay. Someone say okay. Okay, good, good, good. So let's go back to this screen. So earlier we are talking about Nmap and with Nmap, you can see all the people who is online. So these are actually all the PC that's used by the lecturers here. So you can also guess what well, somebody is using Xiaomi laptop. Well, not bad. Nah. Somebody buy Xiaomi laptop. And now this is me. Lah. So I'm streaming from an iMac. So this means that right now the iMac that I'm using is using the IP 68.122. And this is how I can take attendance if you come back to the physical lab also, you know. Okay, and this is one of the way. Lah. So yeah, there you get it. That is how Alex can find out who is uh, online in the campus. And if you have done so, that means that you have already done uh, step number four. So let's go back to the main slide here. And let's go back to step number four. So we are done with this. Now for number three, we, we know that you can always do this using ZenMap. Or you can ping manually. Okay. Now uh, I will give you five minutes to ask questions for quest number three before we go to the next one. So please drop any questions that you have about 
quest number three. Okay, uh, Achu, Achu is asking, can you use ARP A in command prompt? Um, you can do that. ARP is going to give you, yeah, you can do that also. And I think ARP is actually a better way. So that's a very good idea too. So your friend here, if you look at the chat, he is suggesting, can we use this command ARP A in the command prompt to see who is in the network? Yes, this will also work. This is another way, which is actually better than ZenMap because you see, ZenMap is doing a ping scan and this can be blocked if the network engineer in Utah don't want you to know who is coming to the campus. He can block ZenMap, he can block ping, block ICMP, then ZenMap cannot work anymore. Okay, but ARP cannot be blocked. So actually ARP is a better way for you to see who is in the campus today. Now, uh, you can try this out on your own if you're interested. Uh, Lee is asking ZenMap is only for local area network. Actually, um, for this subject, the demo is only for local area network, but no, you can use this to scan a remote network, provided a few things. First, the next destination network that you are trying to scan, they didn't block ICMP. That's the first thing. Now, second thing, they didn't block hot scanning. Port scanning is considered an attack, so most firewall already block port scanning. So most of the time, if you want to scan a remote network, you won't get any result. But actually, you can use it to scan any remote network. Okay? Can we scan Utah campus using ZenMap? You can do so, Gabriel. When you come back here today, you cannot do so. When you come back here, you can do that. Okay. Let me see who else is having questions. Okay, fine. That is until step three. We have done another step three. So guys, we'll take a five minute break. I think um, Alex is also tired. So let Alex have his coffee. We come back in a short while in five minutes. So now we, this is, we are 308. So please come back to the stream around 312. Okay, in five minutes from now. And then we'll continue with quest four and quest five. So I see you back in a short while. Of course, for you guys who want to ask questions, um, for you who you want to ask questions, I'll still be in the chat. So please drop any questions that you have for Quest One Two Three, and for those who want to take a break, please go ahead, and I'll see you back in a short while.
Okay, guys, welcome back uh, to the lectures. So uh, let's get let's continue with the LX hacking game. And right now we are already in quest number four. So very soon LX will be able to get to the main quest. Once he's finished the main quest, then he can get home to his family. Uh. So quest number four. Alex wants to find out who is the Apple design server. So what we are doing here is actually we, we are trying to see quest number four. Who is the design server? Now uh, I'll show you using the network diagram here. So in today's in one of the Alex missions, Alex is supposed to get into this server here, which is the Apple design server that stores all the secret product information about the new product is Apple is developing right now. So all the new iPhone 12, the next 10 gen iMac, everything is here. So Alex wants to get into this design server. Now before you can do so, the first thing that Alex needs to know is that what is the IP address of the server? Because you see, remember I said earlier, Alex do not see this screen, only me and you see this. So Alex only know what is his IP address right now. He also know who else is online. So Alex know 1.100 is online, but he doesn't know uh, who is the server. Dot one is it the server? Dot two is the server, or is it dot ten or dot one hundred? He cannot know. Okay. So in quest number four, Alex want to use a, a two different kind of method to find out who is the design server. So when we say who, it means that what is the IP address of the server Alex is trying to hack right now. Okay. So again, I will show you two ways to do so, and we start with the easy way first. Okay, now e the easy way, let's look at the network here. Now, on the hacker tracer here, oops, hold on, uh, I have to open packet tracer again. I saw in a minute. So guys, you know, uh, you see my iMac is running out of RAM, so I need all the YouTube views so that I can buy new RAM and then you don't have to wait for the program to load in the next stream. I'm just kidding. So anyway, uh, yeah, we are back here, so let's get back to the network and just let me change the IP address again because I think I didn't save the file earlier, so I have to change this again. Okay, now we are cool and we can now try to scan who is the design server. So looking at the network file here, that is a clue that Alex can use. So if you look at the Apple design server right now, you can see that the URL or we call this the domain name for this server is apple.com. And when we say URL, URL uh, the web address that you always use to browse a website, google.com, apple.com, amazon.com, those are URL or some people call them domain name. Okay, so this is the first trick Alex can use. Now, what he will do next is he will use the DNS service. So remember, this is called a DNS domain name service to find out what is the IP address of the server he's going to have. Now the trick here is the DNS is a server or a service that will translate a domain name to an IP address. So in our example here, the domain name of this server is apple.com. Now Alex doesn't know that this IP address is 1.100. Alex cannot see this, but Alex can see apple.com. Everybody can see this, okay? So with apple.com, Alex will use a DNS service to translate to the IP address and then he will find out 
what is the IP address of this server. Now, I will show you how I do this first, and then I will explain to you the intuition behind what is happening. Okay, so to do so, it's very simple. Go back to Alex machine, go to the desktop here, and go back into the command prompt. Okay, so once you're into the command prompt, we will use the command ns lookup to do a domain name search. So the command here is ns lookup space, and then you put in the web address or the domain name that you are trying to resolve. Now in this case, we know it is apple.com, so it will be ns lookup apple.com. You press enter and you will get the IP address of apple.com server. So I will zoom this in for you. For those who are trying out, the command is ns lookup followed by the domain name. So in this case, it is apple.com. So you put apple.com here, press enter, you will get the results. Okay. Now let's take a look at what does the result mean. So in the first two lines here, you will see the server and address. And you will get 192.168.1.10. So the first two lines here actually show us who is the DNS server in this network. Now what we are doing here is we are doing a domain name lookup. And domain name lookup means that you translate apple.com back to the original IP address. This is done by the DNS server. Now in this network, the DNS server is this server here, Apple DNS server, with the IP 1.10, which is why you see here, the server that is trying to help Alex right now, who is resolving the domain query, is 1.10. So this is the IP address of the DNS server. Okay, now the next two line here is what we are looking for. And the DNS server tells us that, okay, you want to know apple.com IP, the IP is 192.168.1.100, which is the IP address of Apple Design Server, and that is a server that we are trying to hack into. Okay, so again, what we have done here is, by using an NS2 card, followed by apple.com, because we know apple.com, this guy here, the DNS server, 1.10, tell us that apple.com is actually hosted in the server with the IP 1, the 100. Gotcha. So with this, now Alex knows the IP address of the server he need to have, he's going to have, is having 1, the 100. That's the IP address of the server. Okay. So that's the next lookup. Um, so I'll answer to the questions and then I'll come back. I'll explain what is going on when you type an S lookup, okay? So let's see what is the questions we have here. DYH, yours doesn't work. Uh, DYH, again, for those who are trying out this with me, make sure you run this from the Alex PC inside packet tracer. Do not type an S lookup in the real command prompt, okay? DYH, I think you are using a real command prompt so that won't work. If you are using the command prompt on Alex PC, definitely it will work. Okay. So Lee is asking why there are two addresses. Okay, now um Lee, this is just how the display is showing you. Okay. Uh if you use other command prompt you'll see different different things. It doesn't matter, it is just how they show you the result. Now these two addresses is pointing to the same DNS server, but in some cases you actually you will get more than two or three or four. That's because in the real world you have many DNS server. It is not just one DNS server. Okay, for example, if all the guys here who are listening today right now, we know that our DNS server is definitely 8.8.8.8, which is the Google DNS server, because a lot of website that we want to go to has been blocked by the government. So we need to use 8.8.8.8. Okay. So to answer your questions, Lee, in some cases you can have more than one DNS server because some DNS server cannot go to certain websites. So if you have more DNS server, you have better chances to resolve all the website that you are trying to get to. Okay, that explains why you have more than one. Okay, next question here. Um what is this? What is this? This is a uh, a way for you to translate a domain name back to the IP address. 
Okay, to answer your questions, I will show you one example here. Let's take a look at the intuition behind how DNS works. So I'll get back to the slides. And there is one slide where I will be showing you how does the DNS work. Okay, guys, so if you are new to DNS, please pay attention because this uh, concept is quite important. And I will, I will just be saying this once and in the future when we talk about DNS, automatically you should know that what do we mean by DNS, okay? So over here, um, we have Alex PC and we have Apple Design Server. Okay, uh, why not I, I use another example to make this clearer for you. Okay, now I will show you an example when Steve Jobs tried to browse apple.com. So first thing you should know is apple.com is here, okay? This server is apple.com. So if I want to see the website which is inside this server, what I need to do is really just go to a web browser of your choice, Google Chrome, Mozilla, Microsoft Edge, any browser, and we type in this IP address or this DNS name. So I will show you how can Steve Jobs do so. Let's say if I'm Steve and I want to go to apple.com server. So for Steve to do so, I get into Steve PC and then I get to the desktop here and then I go to the web browser. Okay, so again, right now I'm in here, I'm in Steve Jobs PC, I go to the desktop, I go to the web browser, so I will click on the web browser and I simply type apple.com. I press enter. There you go. You can see the Apple website is showing on Steve Jobs' machine right now. So we want to know what is going on behind the scene. And let's get back to the slide here. So when Steve Jobs browsed apple.com, the first thing that happened is Steve Jobs PC is talking to this DNS server. Okay, so you see, when Steve Jobs browsed the website, Steve doesn't need to know what is the IP address of the server. Instead, Steve simply type apple.com which is the domain name so this is the url and then you will see the website but for machines machine doesn't understand apple.com google.com things like that machines only understand ip address so uh, in this case what you are seeing here is that when steve browse to apple.com so over here steve is here he will send what we call a DNS request to the DNS server to resolve apple.com. So again, machine don't understand web address. Machine only understand IP address. So if Steve want to look at this website here, he needs to know what is the IP address of the server that is hosting this apple.com. So he need to know this address. Okay, then he can do so using a DNS query. So let's look at the flow of the packets. So I will draw this in purple for you. So first thing, Steve PC will talk to the DNS server and he will ask the first question. So this is the first question here. So Steve PC Steve will ask the DNS server. And he asked what is the IP of apple.com. That is the first question. Okay, so this packet will go from Steve PC to the DNS server. When the server receives this query, it will check on the database, or we call this the table lookup. So on the DNS server, you have all the IP address to domain name mapping. So you don't you just need to think about this. DNS is a very smart server that knows about most of the IP address of the server in the, on the internet. Okay, You can ask them anything, he can answer you. So what happened is, the DNS server now checked his table and then he said, Okay, you want to go to apple.com, the IP address is 192.168.1.100, which is this IP address here. It happens that all DNS servers know about this mapping. So you see what we are doing here is we are translating apple.com to an IP address. Do you see that? So right now apple.com 
become 192.168.1.100. That's exactly what Steve PC is asking. So this IP address here will be sent back to Steve PC. Okay, so that is the second thing that will happen, which is going on the opposite direction from the DNS server back to Steve PC. So you will have packet that goes this way, and what is happening is the DNS server talks to Steve PC and he say, Hey, just now you're asking what is apple.com. Apple.com is 192.168.1.100. And with that, Steve now know that uh -huh, if I want to go to the apple.com, I need to go to 192.168.1.100, which is this IP address here pointing to this server. Okay, so that explains the DNS that happened behind the scene, which means that every time, every time you browse to a website, your PC is actually asking the DNS server what is the IP address of the server that is hosting the website you are trying to get to. Okay, which means in this case it's quite simple, only two. Your PC asks the server, DNS server, what is the IP for this web address. The DNS server will reply, the IP address of this web address is what what what, then send back to you. Okay, so that is DNS. So with that, the next thing Steve will do is, Steve already know this is the IP. So if I want to get to the server, I have to send the packet, the HTTP packets, to the host with this IP, which is this guy here. So from the here onwards, all the packets will go in this way to the web server. So when you type apple.com, you go to this server, the server will re reply back to you with the website that you are trying to see, which is the apple.com website that I shown you earlier. Okay, so actually there are only four things that happen here. The first thing is you have to ask the DNS server to translate the domain name into an IP address. Having the IP address, you can then go to the correct web server and you send the right HTTP request to the right person. Okay, that is how, uh, that is exactly what happened when you browse on the internet. Okay, so if you are clear about this, we will get back to the game. Now before that, if you have any questions about DNS, please ask me on the chat right now, I'll reply to you. So anybody have any questions on DNS? Okay, cool. Now guys, if you know about DNS, then I will show you one more thing about how you can find out who is the server, what is the IP address of the server that you want to hack, okay? And then we'll stop here and we'll leave the rest of the missions for the Friday stream. So last thing for today, we'll see how we can use Nmap, again, Nmap to find out who is the web server that we are trying to hack. So if you are ready, I'll open up Nmap here. So this is so this is method to nmap and I bring up the nmap. Okay, now over here you should see again. This is the same nmap that we have used earlier, but we are going to do different things. So the first time we use this, we use this to scan who is online in the network using a ping scan. Now in this case, we want to do an intent scan to see who, what server is this. So the, the concept is that, let's say this is a server. Try to think of this as a server. Now, uh, the, the thing is that a server, some people have the misconception where server is the, those kind of big chunky machine that's very hot, very loud, that is the server. Now actually that's not the case because server can be any device that connects to the internet and is providing services. So something as small as this can be a server. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is that a server, a, a server like this can be running many different services. 
So let's say if this is a web server, it can also be game server, it can also be web server, email server, data server. So it doesn't mean that a web server can only be a web server. A, a server can be many different server in one physical server unit. Okay, so that gives us a question where if I ask you, what server is this? Like if you play Pokemon, what Pokemon is this? Huh? Now, we can also guess what server is this by using the intent scan in ZenMap. So how does it work? Now in ZenMap, the intent scan will be asking the server. So later on, we'll put in the server IP address. So it will ask the server, what are the open ports that is running on the server? Okay, now the result that you will get is if the port is open, you will get a list of number for the open ports. So before I continue, you need to understand what is the concept of port number. Okay, so I will use the slide to explain what is the port number first. Okay, so what you're seeing on the screen right now um, is three different address that is used by the machine. And I don't know about you, but like for me, I have many names, okay? Uh, most of the people in the university, they call me avocado. When I get out from the university, they call me, I don't know, they call me something that I shouldn't say on the screen, okay? Now, you see, I have many names depending on where am I and who I'm going out with. For machine, it is also the same. A machine can have many different addresses and that is used for different different reasons okay now of course you have heard about IP address there's another address which is called MAC address which is the physical address and we'll learn more about this in the coming lectures the third address is called the port number okay now port number means the number that is used to identify applications so think about this if you are using your mobile phone right now on your phone, you have Facebook, you have WeChat, you have Instagram. So you have many different apps that is running on your phone. How can your phone know what apps you are using at the moment? They use this thing called the port number. So every program that you run on the machine has one unique number. If it is a network program, if it needs to go to the network, you have a port number. So for example, if today you play Wangzhe on your phone, to play Wangzhe, you need to connect to Wangzhe server, right? That Wangzhe server have one number, maybe say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When you browse to Bible to download your notes, that connection, when you browse, is using a web session. So you are actually opening port 80. That is another number. So the, the point is, all the programs that you run on the machine have one unique port number so that the machine knows what program that you are using to get online at the moment okay so for port number there are two kind of port number we have this well-known port and we have random port okay uh just give me a moment so in port number you have two kind of port number either you have a well-known port or you have a random port so their difference is that well-known ports is the number that is used is from 1 to 1023 and this is from 1023 onwards. Okay, so well-known port is used for the popular application. So you can guess that from the name, well-known, famous. So well-known port, uh, we keep it, we reserve it for those apps or those services that is used by many people around the world. And this number, they will not change. For example, if today you browse to a website using a not secure connection, HTTP, then the web server is using port 80, TCP port 80. This number means this is a web session. This 80 will not change. Forever it will be for HTTP. Now, if you want to do FTP, then FTP is number 21. 
if you want to do a remote login using Telnet, it's number 23. So this number is always the same for some well-known services. It won't change. Okay. Now, whereas for a random port, for example, now if I play FIFA 2000, okay, I want to play online with someone to show people I'm a pro. So in that case, I need to connect to FIFA server. The port number for FIFA server is actually a random port. So today, if you connect to FIFA server, it could be using 81234. Tomorrow, you play a new match. You check the port number, it could be 8222. It, it is always changing because FIFA 2000 is using a random port. So well-known port is kept for the popular services. Random port is used for all other services like the game that we are playing. Or if you write a program that needs to go to the network, you will also be using a random port. So you see, because FIFA 2000 is not so popular, some people play it, some people don't play it. That's why we have to use a random port, cannot use a well-known port. Okay, so you have to know that there are two kinds of port numbers, and port numbers is used to identify what applications you run on the computer or on your phone. Okay, so if you understand the port number, we can now go back to the nmap example here. So let's look at nmap here. So what I'll do is, the next thing uh, I want to try to scan the server to see what server is this. So our question is, I want to guess, is this a web server? Or is this a HTTP, HTTP server, web server, or FTP server? Or is this a data server, a game server? So the first thing you need before you can do that is, you need to know the server IP address. Luckily for us, just now Alex already find out the IP address is 192.168.1.100 okay so what alex can do in packet tracer is that alex have to scan using nmap but again nmap cannot be used in packet tracer so i will show you using a real example in utah campus okay so please don't be confused guys later on you will see the ip address that i scan is a bit different you might think why i'm not scanning the apple server it is because I'm using a real network to show you. So let's get back to the Zen map here. Again, in the place of target, this is where you want to put in the IP address of the server you are trying to scan. Okay. So by right, by right, if Alex wants to do this, Alex have to scan 1.100. That is what Alex will do inside packet tracer. Okay. Now for my example, I will use the IP address of my server. So my server is running on 6.127, 68.127. Okay, now over here on the place of profile, this is where you have to change things up a bit. So earlier we are using a ping scan. Now you want to use intent scan instead of a ping scan. Okay, guys, is everything still fine for you? Can you still follow? Can I, can I hear from you? Everything is fine. Somebody say something because I'm not sure if I'm still online. Am I still online? Can you still hear me? Oh, okay, luckily. Okay, good, good, good. Now, let's get back to this one. Uh, we are going to use this intense scan. And with this, what is actually happening is we will find out all the ports that is open. So remember the port number that I explained to you earlier? That is the port number that we want to know. Okay, so if I do this, I click on the scan button here. Now let's wait up for a while because scan will take up some time. So right now I'm scanning and okay, let's sit back and relax. In the short while, you'll see what are the ports that are open. And yeah, we got the result back quite quick because I think, yeah, for some reason it is really quick. So let's take a look at what we have here. And you see from the output here, we see that the Zen map is showing us all the ports that is open on the server. So from here, we can know that port 21 is open, 139 is open, port 80 is open. And what we can conclude here is that with this, we can guess what server is this. For example, if I look at the first line of the output, it says that 127, you have port 21 open. 
So assuming that this is 127, I can say this is a FTP server because 21 is for FTP. Now I go to the next line here. Let's say I go to what this uh, line number port 80. So can you guys see port 80 TCP is open? So when you see port 80, we know ah, port 80 is actually for HTTP. So that means this guy is a web server. Okay, so this is what we can do from the scan. When we scan, we are asking this server, tell me all the ports that you, are op you have open right now. And from the result, I can start to guess what kind of server this is. Do you get it? So from here, if Alex do the same thing, and when Alex see that, okay, the IP address that I have right now, I'm trying to scan, it has port 80. So most likely, it is the server that I want to hack. Of course, uh, it is a guessing game because there can be other PC that is also having port 80 open. Okay, so this is just one of the way. Lah. But the better way is the one that I showed you earlier. When you know apple.com, when you have the domain name, easily you can use NSLOOKUP to ask for the IP address of the server that you want to hack. Okay, so that brings us to step number four. That is how Alex can find out what is the IP address of the server. So we will go back to step num. We go back to the first slide and we can now take this off. Okay guys, so I think we are on the right track and right now we are already done step four. And from here we can know that the IP address of the server that we are trying to hack is 192.168.1.100 Yeah, that is what we're going to do next on this IP address. Okay, so guys, um, for this dream, we will stop at quest number 4. I think it's good enough that Alex already find out what is IP that he want to hack. Of course, Alex don't have to do this in one day. So we will finish up step number 5. And then we'll go back to the two main missions on the Friday stream. Okay, so thank you guys for joining. As always, if you have any questions, I'll stay on the chat. Please ask me on the chat. And I hope that you learned something new today. Also for the lab, if you are not sure about what you're doing, don't worry because I think you're still new. And every time you're learning something new, it takes time. So that's fine. So again, if you have any questions on the lectures or for the labs, please feel free to ask me ask any of the practical tutors we are all very helpful and we really hope that you enjoy what we are trying to show you here okay so thank you for joining again thank you peace out for those who want to ask questions please ask on for those who want to ask questions uh, right now this is the best time for you to ask you have 10 more minutes to ask questions okay We can go driving in on my scooter, uh, you know, just right in London. Oh, right. <laughs> I love my hometown as much as Motown. I love SoCal. And you know I love Springsteen, faded blue jeans, Tennessee whiskey.
How many days did I spend thinking about how you did me wrong, wrong, wrong? Lived in the shade you were throwing till all of my sunshine was gone, gone, gone. And I couldn't get away from ya. In my feelings more than Drake, so yeah, your name on my lips, tongue tied. forgot that you existed when I thought that it would kill me but it didn't and it was so nice so peaceful and quiet I forgot that you existed it isn't love it isn't hate it's just indifference some popcorn as soon as my rap started going down 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 laughed on the schoolyard as soon as i tripped up and hit the ground 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 and i would have stuck around for ya would have bought the whole town so yeah would have been right there front row even if nobody came to your show but you showed who you are then one magical night i forgot that you existed Kill me, but it didn't. And it was so nice, so peaceful and quiet. I forgot that you existed. It isn't love, it isn't hate, it's just indifference. I forgot that you sent me a clear message, taught me some hard. I just forget what they were. It's all just a blur. I forgot that you existed. <laughs> and I thought that it would kill me, but it didn't. And it was so nice. So peaceful and It isn't hate, it's just indifference.